and welcome back to the Model Mama Show. I'm so excited you're joining us and we have a truly, truly inspiring mama. Here with us today, Lauren Thank Gores, you. Ireland, who is just incredible in every way. You just launched this amazing skincare line. Yes, and Summer Fridays. Summer <laughs> Fridays. It's so fun and Thank fresh you. and beautiful. And Thank you are you. also the creative director of your super successful blog called You and Lou. Yes. And most importantly, Lauren is a mama to a 16 month old baby boy. Oh, it flies. And a wifey. <laughs> she does everything. But we're so excited Thank to you. have you here on the show today. Thank you. Thanks you for doing? having me. I'm so good. I always love talking about motherhood and work and the imperfect balance of it all. So truly, I'm an open book. You well, that's why we're here. We want to know all of your secrets and just dive right in. But let's like just start right off the bat with beauty because I just can't take my eyes off yes, this gorgeous packaging. Mask. Even this is her jet lag mask. Yes. And we could all use that because as moms, we're all exhausted. I've, everyone is exhausted. <laughs> so that was a, a big reasoning behind making it. I made it with my partner, Mariana. Hewitt. She's a beauty blogger and we've been friends for years and we both were constantly feeling jet lagged when we initially came up with this idea. I was also pregnant at the time and you know you have yes. to completely change your whole skincare routine when yes. you're pregnant so and I couldn't use anything that I actually felt was super effective and so we felt there was this space for something that was really clean but also effective and still yeah. felt really cool to use um, and so that's how the idea of the jet lag mask came about and about summer Fridays so we're just we're, we're so excited about it we're in Sephora right now and, I know it's, um, I know it's incredible. Incredible. Really and your exciting. launch was hugely successful only a couple months ago uh, yeah, in March. We launched yeah, in March. That's yeah. awesome. And then can you explain, I love, I was like reading on your website about like why you named the brand Summer Fridays. Yes. It's, you know that feeling of a summer Friday? So you know how yeah. you get a lot of people will get off a little bit early on, mm -hmm. a, on a summer Friday? Or it's like this feeling that just kind of makes you feel joyful and blissful. And we wanted to bottle up that feeling yeah. so you could feel it all year round. And then, well, and especially because this mask is so easy. It's not one, like when you think of a mask, you think of something that you really have to dedicate a lot of time to. No, to this is like off. meant for the girl on the go and for people That's who are super incredible. busy. So whether you actually are flying and you want to use it on a flight, you can mm -hmm. put it on and just let it sit during the flight. You don't have to rinse it off. Um, it can also be used. Wait, did you guys hear that? So you, you literally don't have to don't rinse have it. To rinse you it don't off. have you to rinse it off. You just put it on a clean face. Put it on a clean face, let refreshed. it soak in. Yeah, if you want to, if you just want to put it on for, you know, 10 minutes and then run out the door, you could always like wipe it off with a warm cloth. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of times I actually just use it as more of a moisturizer primer, okay. especially when I'm in a hurry. You just kind of lather it on, yes. rub it in, put your makeup on over it, and it just allows your skin to feel really hydrated. It helps under eye circles and awesome. makes you feel a little fresher. That's incredible. Yeah. I love it. It's like literally the perfect mom product because it's all Oh natural. my God, it's a mom life. Every yeah. mom I talk to, they're like, this lives in my bag at all times. Yes. It's even, it's also really great for your under eyes. So even if you just, even if you have a full face of makeup on, but you're just like, I really want to, you know, get a little under eye boost. You could always just do that in between meetings I or love it. whatever you're doing. Because yeah. I hate that when you have to have like 10 different products for your face. Yeah. You know, I know, you just it's want a lot. something that can go Well, this everywhere. is also like really meant to be added to your routine. So it's like super easy to add to whatever else you're doing. You can use mm -hmm. it with whatever oils you already use. You can mix it with your SPF in the morning, put your makeup on over it. So that's why we love it so much. It's really versatile and it's not, yeah. it's really not meant to replace anything. It's just kind of meant to be added yes. to your routine. Yeah, Give exactly. you that instant Give you that glow. glow. Exactly, the that's mom glow. That's incredible. Yeah, thank so you. So obviously you're busy. You're... We are very busy. It's a... <laughs> you do a <laughs> lot. Yeah. So like, let's talk about how you do it all and be a mom, because really that's the premise of this show is like the transition to motherhood because yeah. you're still a new mom, your first time mom. Yes. And, but you've sort of evolved your career to work with your schedule. So can you talk about Yeah, that? I think thing, that's, I think probably the biggest thing I've had to accept that things are, cha are, are constantly changing. So, yeah. you know, not only is my baby constantly changing and his schedule is changing, yeah. but then I think so many things in my life are also changing and that I had to kind of accept accept this like natural flow and I just really had to accept that things aren't always going to be you know on a perfectly scheduled routine even if I want it that way in my head because I don't know my baby might wake up cranky that day or I might have a meeting that comes up super last minute and we just you know have to figure it out um, but I've learned to kind of go with it uh, you know a little better now I think there was yes. a period of adjustment where I I wanted everything to sort of fit into my my normal box and then that was actually more stressful and when I finally kind of just let it go and I said you know what we're just going to take it day by day and yeah. whatever is the priority that day 
we'll, it's true. you know, we'll make it work. Yes, um, it's really good and advice. you know, you build your village. I have help because you have to have help if you're also going to work and, you know, and so I've got an amazing family and, mm -hmm. you know, we, cool. we make it work. Yeah. yeah. So, but was that something that you had to kind of overcome when you were a new mom is just being willing to ask for help? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think I'm still, I think maybe I'm still overcoming that. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm still overcoming like yeah. all of my mom hurdles. Yeah. Um, but there, I, there's also a lot of joy in overcoming that. Like, I think there's been so many things that are, have now opened up because of these changes or, you know, you get new time with family that maybe you didn't have before because now your baby kind of brings everyone together in a really new way. So true. Um, and accepting that help and realizing that people want to help you and mm -hmm. they want to see you succeed in, in yeah. all of your roles. And then I think too, I, I think I, I think this whole journey has proven that you could, we can absolutely have, have it all and have everything we want. We just can't have it all in perfect harmony all at once. Yeah. And I think that's that is been so true. That a is a great like, lesson for me. Yes. That is my quote too. It's like, I totally believe exactly what you just yeah. said. It's like everybody can have it all, but just not all at the same time. So right. you have to sort of spread it out. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you know, if you're giving energy to something, of course, something mm -hmm. else will, will sacrifice a bit because that's just the reality of kind of putting your your heart into something. Yeah. Um, but I also have you know have learned. I think you can kind of look and see when when certain things take more priority. And there are days yeah. that that work takes you know a lot of your energy. And then there are other days where it's you know you really have to be 100% in mom mode and everything else can wait. So I think it's just about figuring that out. And I've now set like some office hour time for myself. I was just so. gonna say, do you sort of orchestrate your schedules? So you have like set days that like you're in mom mode or you're working or. I, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah. Again, in my perfect world, yes, I would say, okay, you know, Monday through Thursday, I'm going to be doing this. Friday's my mom day, and I've tried to do that. It just doesn't always happen that way. Again, yeah. because you know, especially it's it's a new business. We just launched in March, and so there's True. a lot of moving parts to it, and I have to, you know, I have to be really focused on on growing that. And so, um, but the beauty of it is because you know we kind of control the schedule. We can also, you know, if something motherhood comes up, that I just have to, you know, really be there for Evan that day. I can I can. Okay. always move things and adjust and make that work, which yeah. I, I feel really grateful for that, you know, <laughs> flexibility. Um, but no, I don't have like a, I don't have a set, you know, okay, these are the hours I work each day. Um, I kind of feel like I'm always working, but yet I can, I can also take a break when I need to, that's, you know, so that's it's incredible. Well, and you're married and then you also have this amazing line with your other founder. Mm -hmm. What's her name again? Mariana. Mariana. Yes, she's Mariana. So, you girls are both so gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. And she's a blogger. And is that who you connected yes. or were yeah, you we've friends been, we've been friends for years. Um, okay. Honestly, I think nine, probably nine years now that we've been really close friends. And uh, she also, I used to be a news anchor. She also used to be in broadcasting. She was a TV host. Awesome. And so we kind of just always like connected over that. And then we both started blogging around similar times. And she really focuses on prestige beauty. And then I did a lot of, I've always done a lot of like wellness and clean beauty. And so, mm -hmm. um, and and like I said, I was pregnant at the time and, yeah. and this idea came to us and we, um, I mean, honestly, we thought of the idea and like within days we're talking to labs and talking to branding agencies and just figuring out how we could kind of make this, this dream come to life. And mm -hmm. uh, we had a really specific no list for ingredients and things that we would not include. And then mm -hmm. we just tested a number of different formulas and went back and forth with our lab and then how created exciting. the jet lag mask. Wow. Yeah. And so you're you're on the brink of creating or launching some additional products too. We we will have more products. I can't share all the details okay. yet, but we will we will have Coming more products. Soon. You'll see more from us. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So little Evan is your yes. the handsome little yes. guy. He's, He's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> so what um, becoming a mom was was that? Were you surprised to become a mom? Like. Were you just ready for it? Like, what we, was the biggest? We were, we were ready. Hurdle. I mean, we were definitely ready. I've, I've, oh, I've always wanted to be a mom. That was, it wasn't something. It just, it felt very natural for me. I, I also have two nieces. Um, my mm -hmm. sister has kids, so I got some good practice with that. And it was something that we always had talked about. That we knew we always wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and then. I don't know. It was it was just all of a sudden we felt like okay. I think now like now just felt like the right the right time when it happened. Um, and so yeah, we were we were ready. We were I don't know if prepared. I don't know if we were totally I prepared. I don't think really you're ever 100 percent <laughs> prepared. But we kind of also had you know we kind of have this we had this sort of bucket list before we even decided to get pregnant. We said okay before we have a baby, mm -hmm. these are all the things we want to do. And of course it's like you know we want to go to you Fiji travel, and Australia. Yeah. And I'm like 28 countries. It's just it was crazy. And I'm like okay we need to just you know we'll never get. It's kind of like you're never prepared enough in that sense. So we just just finally decided like let's put the list away. We can do all of these things after yeah. 
our baby comes. And I think that was also like a sense of relief, which I don't, maybe sounds odd, but no, I, I know what you're going to say, but I love, yeah, yeah. Like we put so much pressure, I think on this idea of having children and all these things like, Oh, your body's not going to be the same and you're not gonna have your life back. And can you work? And it was almost everyone else's voices in my head that made me feel apprehensive about things. And then I realized that it was just a lot of concern, you know, for nothing. We all kind of find our own path. And of, yeah. of course, life changes in a million and one ways, but it also changes in really beautiful ways that I think like make you feel yes. so much more motivated to do, to travel and yes. to work and to do things you love. And to, you know, I just, I can't wait to show him our world and, and all of the things we love about it. And mm -hmm. so I think it's, it, it it actually didn't make my life feel crazier. It almost just made it feel calmer, even though it's much busier. It, yeah. it was this sense of relief that, you know, he was always meant to be and I was always meant to be his mom. And now our now our life is together. So, That's so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Thank that you. was so well said. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I do, I, I remember that feeling like yesterday, like when I was pregnant and so many people are in your head telling you sort of what your life is gonna be like yeah. when you have a baby and you have no idea if, that's true or not, but it kind of like creates this anxiety. It's before, of, before you're even pregnant yeah. sometimes. Yeah, it's you're like, wait, what do you mean? Do I'm not gonna be able to do this, so or true. we're not gonna be able to travel, or my body's never gonna be the same. It's and, so true, because people always say, well, do it before you have kids, do it before kids, and so yeah. you're just like, oh my God, well, when am I having kids? Because like, yeah. I have to do all of these things, and I just realized that, you know, of course there's like, you know, c certain, I'm sure goals or things that you, you wanna do, beforehand but at the same time it's I, I think sometimes you just have to kind of let that go because it's like you'll never you'll never have probably the perfect job you want or the amount of money you want or the all of these things or all the places you want to travel. They're moving targets. It's exactly. like it's, always... it's, it's going to flow and I think it's just about adjusting to that and then mm -hmm. I just always say glass half full you know like the glass yes. is always half full and you just you find the light and you keep on going. Yep. But also like I mean really when I was like creating sort of this brand and the show I was I was just like really wanting to shed light on the fact that like once you become a mom like you can still do so many things that you did before but right. like you just have to sort of like pivot and do them a little differently and like but when you pivot totally. the right way and you surround yourself with the right people that are encouraging you and your goals it's like it's it's like that much more fulfilling and that's it's you know, I totally agree. And I think that I think we're so fortunate to also be in a time where there's so much support around us. Yes. I think there's a lot of support in, in work. I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of support in mothering. Um, you know, there's, totally. there's, there's shows like this and there's so many websites and there's people on Instagram and, you know, yeah. I, we really kind of have this amazing tribe of people who I think are really there to support whatever your decision might be, you know, whether it's that you want to be home full time and give a hundred percent of your energy, yeah. you know, to be a mother and, and creating the tribe around that if you're trying to do both if maybe you're working more and, and you're trying to figure out how to find the most help you know for your little yeah. ones so whatever I think everyone's decision is their own but I think what's really incredible is that there's so much support for I think whatever that decision is I agree um, and I don't think that was always the case you know I think we're, I think we're very fortunate to be yeah. you know at this time where people are very understanding and you know again i mean if i've had to move meetings i've had to move calls and things have come up and people are are really supportive of it and um you know it's okay they get it and there's yeah. a lot of other a lot of people that we work with are also working moms and so yes. it it very much you know comes from a place of understanding and mm -hmm. you know we again we kind of like we do, all do the best that we can do and then we support each other totally i couldn't agree more yeah. and i think it's just so important to have that dialogue going I mean, I agree with you. I think like up until a couple years ago, even it's like people weren't even really talking about like what it meant to transition to becoming a mom because right. it's like there's so much information out there about like what to expect during pregnancy and yeah. how to take care of your baby. But there's like there isn't a lot of literature until more recently about like how to transition to like motherhood right. and like what that means for you like personally. It's so true. And I actually felt like the I know a lot of a lot of moms always say like the newborn stage is the hardest for me it was actually like six to nine months was the most difficult for me because to your point it was like the transition into real motherhood yeah. to where now it wasn't just this you know infant that was kind of just eating and sleeping it was they really kind of become this little human at six months you know and they're you know they're crawling and then they're walking and then they're starting to say you know their first words and all of that and so yeah. that became and they're much more aware you know that he became so much more right. aware when I would leave the house or whatever it might be and I think um, and also there were like many mama breakdowns during that time. That's what I always tell everyone. Really? And they're like, oh, it just seems like you've got it together. And I'm like, you know, we, I, again, I always try to find that light, but there, there are a hundred percent days where I 
I'm overwhelmed and I'm trying to figure out, it's like you question, am I, am I doing it right? Am I parenting yeah. right? Am I working the right way? You know, you I kind know. of go do this back and forth. And I think that's really normal too. And I think that's important so to understand normal. that it's like, you know, some days you're going to feel like superwoman and you can do everything. And then other days, like yeah. I'm in my sweatpants until 10 o'clock at night it's and I'm like sure. down on myself because I like didn't get to certain things. And I just think that's a normal feeling. It's, Absolutely. you know, some days we're rock stars and other days yeah. we're not. <laughs> And that's no, okay. I, exactly. <laughs> some days it all falls into place and clicks. Yeah. And then some days it just, you don't get to your full nope, to-do you're list. you're late to and everything. It's and kind it's kind of a bummer, exactly. but you have to just keep plugging away. Yeah. But I think like the healthiest way to sort of navigate that is to really share and find like other yeah. moms or even the show. Like, you know, come and like participate in the conversations and like online because everybody has those yeah. days. But I think like. With but when Instagram you're in it, you feel like you're, you're in it. Like you, yeah. you don't always hear like the other side of it, and right. you feel like you're alone. But it's like everybody goes through those, that like transition. Oh, yeah, and everyone's everyone's story is so different because everyone's situation yeah. is so different, and you know whatever, whatever it is, it's like it's your own story. And yeah. so I think that's why sometimes we can it can feel lonely. But then mm -hmm. when you start talking about it, and you realize like okay, someone else did something similar, and absolutely, you and know, you, you relate kind of to feel them. less down on yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you're like oh, I'm not the only one that struggles with that. Right. So, but speaking of that, what do you do on those days where you're kind of like having a struggle bus day, and you need to like give yourself yeah. a pep talk? Yeah, I do. You... Well, I do believe in pep talks. I literally <laughs> sometimes like stare in my mirror and I'm like, okay. <laughs> You can do it. You know, like Me sometimes too. you just Me need too. a minute. Um, I also, I mean, I run a lot. I'm like a big fan of it or whatever it is that you like yeah. to do to work out. I like to do Fitness, some yoga yeah. sometimes or go for like a great run. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like sometimes that alone time is important of just kind of clearing my head and having yes. some time to myself. Um, or there, there are days where it's just, you know, Evan and I, and I, and I need that alone time. And then sometimes I'll just bring him in. Like I've made him part of my workouts with me. We have a little gym at home and oh, I'll literally awesome. just like bring him in with a bunch of his toys. And then I can still kind of like at least do a little bit of a workout. And that just helps me, you know, get some good endorphins going. And then also yeah. just work, working out just also makes you feel better. Even if it's like 10 minutes, you know, even totally. if you're just doing like really light weights or you're doing abs or whatever it is, stretching. it's just something stretching. It just makes you feel good. And it's yeah. just, it's a nice boost and so I try to do that and then he's now used to it so he doesn't mind kind of being in there with me or being That's part great. of it with me. Um, so those are probably the biggest the biggest things. Sometimes I'll try to also sit and write or journal a little bit. Um, yeah. But I you know that. you find sometimes finding that time that solo yeah. time is also I think that was probably the other transition because I'm I've always I'm such an alone time person. I've like always loved you know my part of the day where it was just to myself and then yeah obviously after you become a mom, you're, you're kind Never. of, then you're sort of juggling all these, yeah, you're not by yourself. And then even when the baby goes to bed, then you all, I want to be with my husband. Cause I'm like, okay, well I haven't been with him yet, you know, today. Yeah. And so then it's kind of finding, mm. sort of finding new ways to create that space for yourself. But right. I think prioritizing that too is a big, a really big lesson for me. I was just like, okay, every day there has to be, there like has to be something, exactly. Something, something that yeah. I do that just brings me back to, to being myself. That's great advice. What about like your morning routine? Do you have anything that you like um, have to do in the morning to try to like set, start your day right? Yeah, we do. We actually try to keep, we try to keep the mornings phone free for the most part, which is oh, really hard awesome. for me because I share everything on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and so, and then, you know, I'm always like in touch with people on text and it's just, I don't know why it's, it's, it is hard to leave my phone, but I found that in the morning, most people are not, especially work stuff, most people are not coming at you that early. I mean, my baby wakes up at six. So usually yeah. like, you know, we wake up, we'll kind of like have a little, if he's up for it, a little family snuggle time. And then we have like the same routine. We go down, my husband and I get coffee. We go in the backyard, we leave our phones. Like That's we kind of just so have sweet. like our family backyard time. We usually go for a walk. Um, mm -hmm. And we just kind of like, we all sort of have our, our time together. Cause we know that during those hours, again, because it's early, no one's no one's at the house at that point. No one's usually like bugging us too much. I haven't, neither one of us left for work yet. And it's just sort of our time together. Mm -hmm. um, and we just always, always have this thing that I say to Evan, I'm always like, it's been the best day ever again, the best day ever. Cause I always say, you know, with him, it's like every, every day feels like it's always the best. And so Aww. we just sort of have that conversation every day about like whatever we're going to do that day, that's going to make it the best, whether it's something we're doing together or that he's doing with my sister or whatever it might be. And um, you know, we just, we kind of, we have that little pep talk each day together. I love that. What a beautiful yeah. morning. It's a good, I, I mean, then usually <laughs> at the end of it, I'm running late. I'm not, <laughs> that, 
I'm still like always running late for everything. I know. So it's too. really calm until it's like 8.45 and I'm not ready yet. And then I'm like, okay, I have to quick hurry up. But, I know. Yeah. I know sometimes that's like the, the catch 22 with me is I feel like when I'm like slower and more intentional sometimes yeah. with my morning, it always makes me late for like the rest no, of the day. No, I know. Day. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm really proud of myself for being this intentional. I know. But like now I'm behind and everything. And now, but I, I still think it's worth it because it's sort of the one part of the, every other. And then it, you really don't get that again until maybe eight, you know, at night where I yeah. think everything They're slows rushing. down because during Anything. just the middle part of the day there's there's just a lot to be done and there's a lot going on and you're yeah you know so when you're like trying to keep your child on schedule right. or your baby on schedule and then fit everything in so it's yeah I agree right totally yeah so we try to have that time and then I we just try to I always try to think too it's like you want to give them of course you always want to give you know your kids like the best of you and you know undoubtedly there are times where it just you know they're you're you're going through something or you're emotional or whatever it is yeah. but I I try to you have that time so that he really feels like he gets a hundred percent of his mom you know a hundred percent of the time I love that I do I do my best on it but <laughs> yeah but it's like if I carve that time out then I know that that's really our time together yeah in the morning yeah that's so special I love that yeah what about um like so that's how you sort of like to start your day but then what about like what's your strategy for achieving balance just with like because you're still do, writing for your blog and doing this amazing beauty skincare line and being a mom and being a wife, it's a lot. <laughs> Lots of things, yeah. So what's your strategy for achieving balance? I think, well, I think one, I've learned that the, the perfect balance probably won't ever exist. And I True. think I also have just started doing things to where like I'll prioritize different different things at different moments. And so, you know, even the blog, for instance, I used to I used to write on my blog, you know, five days a week. And now I, now I maybe do something once a week to the blog. Um, but I, and I'd love to do more and I'd love to be writing more, but I also know that in this moment of time, you know, my baby is taking up a lot of my energy and then I'm also doing a lot of work on summer Fridays and building that. And so, you know, by the time I do those two things, it, it leaves a little bit less time for, for getting content up, um, to the site. But then I also, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it at the same time, because I feel like there's something else that's really blossoming and it doesn't mean that another thing has to go away. It just might not get as much of your attention that's a good for way to look at a it. period of time. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just, I think that it's just a natural, it's true, because it's like, they're only little for so long. Yeah. It's everything is, that's, oh, that's the other thing. Everything is temporary. I always told myself that even when they were like, you know, when he was like two months old and screaming his head off, you know, at night. And it was just like, it's temporary. It doesn't last. It's forever. It, sometimes in the moment, it feels like it lasts forever, but it's all temporary. And then, you know, and then there's, there's something, and there's something more joyful, but then there's also a new, there's something else that you're, you're, you know, battling. So it's, mm -hmm. it just kind of is what it is. And I think like recognizing that, that it's all just temporary also kind of helps you yes. get through it. But I thought, I mean, especially with the whole like mom work-life balance is it's, you know, one, it's not a perfect balance. I think that's the kind of just better to accept that than try to make it perfect. And then so true. I think too, it's okay if you have to like put some things, you know, aside for a little bit. It doesn't mean you have to give up on them, um, but it just might not be like on your to-do list in that moment. Yeah. But you also don't have to necessarily let go of that dream or that thing that you love to do. It just may not be all the time, you yeah. know, for that period. That's really good advice. I love that. Yeah. Well said. We just we have to sacrifice. We don't say it. Just you. Know, it is yeah, what it is. Do. But yeah. But that's called being a good mom and evaluating priorities. Yeah, and exactly. That's what we have to do. Exactly. I love it. What about? Okay. So we've been doing this really funny thing on the Mono Mama Show, where, okay. where I ask each guest to sort of like impromptu give like their funniest or like embarrassing like favorite mom moment no, like God. something in that category and they Ooh, always okay, they keep getting think. better and better um well this is what <laughs> this is a more recent one and I don't know I probably shouldn't have been as embarrassed as I was about it but yeah it was I was still nursing my son and he was just kind of learning so he's 16 months now and this was like around 14 months and I was like weaning out of nurse. This is, that's a long time of breastfeeding. I was like, you know, weaning yeah, out. Wait, how old was he? He was four, a little oh over a year, gosh, 14 months. And so I had this like goal of a year and then it was kind of, it just sort of transitioned out over like, you know, the last two months. And he was already, I was already like supplementing at that point and everything, yeah. but he was starting to like speak words at that point in time. And I just remember we were like, in, we were in line <laughs> at Starbucks and he's like grabbing at my boob and he's going, Bobby, Bobby. And he starts trying to, he's like, you're not, he nicknamed my boob Bobby Stop at that it. point. And I was like, I'm like turning bright red and I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, and then at that moment I came home and I was like, I think we're done breastfeeding. I told my husband, I was like, I'm pretty sure we're done. Oh, and I was like oh my bright God. red in this line, you know, because like everyone's staring <laughs> and they're like, why is this kid like grabbing at her chest saying Bobby? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, okay, once they've nicknamed your boobs, You're, I think yeah. it's time to be done breastfeeding. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm like amazing. red thinking about it. But that was like, that was just a really funny, that was a funny like slash embarrassing moment. Um, I love I even, it. You know, it shouldn't I'm be sure embarrassing. I'm sure so many people funny. can relate to that. Oh, I'm sure. It's like, but yeah, I, I mean, some people they, honestly breastfeed much longer, so I'm they could be oh, fully yeah. asking for it. But and it was you just should the be funny, so proud like, of that. The nickname of it was just the really funny part. That's of funny it. because that's you what know? my son calls his his pacifier. He calls it his Bobby. His Bobby, okay. And he like, yeah, he's upset. It's I mean, so it's funny. like they it's get like so funny what they make up. Stuff. They just like make up things themselves. I know. And, it was like, and I never really heard him say it before, and it was just like he decided he really wanted it in that moment. <laughs> nothing else he wanted and it was so just, what did you do funny. oh i just kind of laughed and i was like hey, when we get home <laughs> i was like you know it was just oh like a funny, it was just a funny thing i mean we were literally like middle of the line you know i wasn't like, like yeah that's table not or gonna happen right. yeah, yeah exactly right yeah. i wasn't like at a place where i could really you know but it was just it was just a funny moment but oh he was gosh, like at that point we're kind of already weaning out anyway and it was we were like pretty much done and then at that point i was like i I just feel like it's time. <laughs> like maybe it's time. Yeah, we don't need to be somewhere where we're like demanding the. Food. You know, yeah. it was it was very funny. Oh my but, gosh! I mean, yeah, funny. for for more than a year, we did. It was like good for you. You know, anywhere and everywhere. But you just, yeah. it was it was funny toward the end. Yeah. No, I I remember. I think my like turning point was like, I mean, my son has always been crazy tall for his age yeah. and like he was just so far off the like pillow even like his legs were like way over here like, and I'm feeling like, odd this now. is really weird he's yeah. like way too big to still be breastfeeding and he's starting to get yeah. a little aggressive with the yeah, boob they, and like, the teeth certain, and you're like, no. I mean again so, like I like commend the moms who've done I mean I oh. know someone who did it for three years and I'm just like that's incredible that's incredible you know yeah um, but yeah, I totally know that feeling. Because in the beginning, it feels so it's, it's such, so like so cute small and they're and, so little. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like yeah, once the teeth start coming, it just becomes a different experience, <laughs> especially but, with boys, because they just get a little yeah, they're aggressive. All, they're just also like and, antsy, and I you know. Like, um, but yeah. it, but it's like it's such a beautiful that's such a beautiful time in life that I wanted. I really did want to hang on to it for as long as I could. And then we just kind of like came to that natural point where I felt like okay, you know, like I just kind of felt like he was done and I was done and all yeah. of that, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, I commend those mamas who can, Me too. who can make it even less impressive. I mean, I commend you. That's incredible that you made it to your, I didn't make it. That's a whole, that that's far, a whole but. separate journey. <laughs> yes. We could but have also, a whole show I know, on we could, have, we could literally honestly. have a show on that. Yeah. Yeah. We should yeah, have you back and you can talk more about okay, yeah, all that a whole segment too. on that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing you all so of your insight on motherhood. It sounds like so dreamy at your house. I want to just come over oh, in the morning. Oh, it's definitely not always the mor <laughs> The mornings are dreamier, but it's definitely not always dreamy. Like I said, it's yeah. like I'm usually like running super late at 8:45, and yeah. you know, you know how it goes. No, but me too. It's we, like it's like cute, and then, moments, and then it's like not cute. Exactly. You're like, and you're like covered in puke and yeah. spit up and yeah. poop and all of the great things. I know. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. All the, <laughs> the actually, non Instagram. I think when I was <laughs> shooting my like promo for this show, I had like some sticky substance on my shoulder. It was like perfect. I was like, oh yeah, oh, well this makes sense. Mm -hmm. because oh, I've like gone to meetings about with literally it. like poop on my white sleeve that oh. I just like didn't realize till I got there. And I was like, oh, lovely. That's great. <laughs> you're like smelling your hand and like, you're like, okay. oh, oh my God. Why does yeah. my hand still smell All like poop? I've watched it yeah. like 10 times. Yeah. Yeah. That's like real mom life. Real mom life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Well, you're a dream. It was so Thank fun to you. have you. Thanks for having and me. And I can't wait to try this mask, you guys. I know. So I you have to tell us it. where, so Sephora is so, where yes, you, you can, can get, get it. So, yes, you can get it on our website, summerfridays.com, or we're also at Sephora.com, and then we're also in all Sephora stores in the U.S. and in Canada. So Crazy. Yes. That's so exciting. So we're, we're is ever, that so yeah. weird for you, by the way? Like, when you walk into yes. the Sephora to just that, see your and product? That, that very recently happened because we started off online, and then we moved into <gasps> stores, and it was, Whoa. yeah, both Marianne and I cried because it was it I, that was just I a really so. emotional moment and it was a Aww. it was a dream of ours it was on our bucket list it was something that we had really like envisioned for the brand since really you know the day it was born and the day that we thought about it it was really like our dream and we used to walk up and down the aisles at Sephora and yeah it's like okay we can envision you know our product here and then when that when it actually happened it was just a very surreal that's moment. so cool it just kind of feels like it comes full circle Gosh, you're you're amazing, girl boss, right here. You're you're <laughs> amazing. You. Well, we'll have to do another show about just like launching a product or giving insight or something. That. Yes, that would be of course. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank amazing. you for having me. Well, thanks for tuning in, you guys. This is Tara and Lauren signing out. <laughs> Tune in next time to the Model Mama Show.